Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Today we will be talking about five of the most unique dreadnoughts in Star Wars Legends. Now, I haven't taken any particular definition of dreadnought, but I'm looking at any super massive capital ship. Anything that really stands out from among the crowd. And I think the first ship on this list does that more so than any other. And I'm talking about Palpatine's Battle Moons. And yes, you did hear me right, I said Battle Moons. So, at the height of Tarkin Doctrine Mania, the Empire was just pumping out super weapons. Some, like the Tarkin itself or the Death Stars, were major threats to the galaxy, while others, like Palpatine's Battle Moons, never really saw a whole lot of action. The most famous of the Battle Moons, and probably the largest, was the Eye of Palpatine. It was disguised as an asteroid, hence the name, but was hollowed out and equipped with the best firepower, sensors, and probably shield generators available. The I was capable of wasting planets, base Delta Zero style, but could also engage entire fleets on its own. It was the same length as an Executor class Super Star Destroyer, but was much, much more massive. Also unique is the fact that the I was controlled almost completely by an artificial intelligence known as the Will. This is exceedingly rare in Star Wars and ties into the I's purpose. The I was meant, or at least this was one of the ways it could have been used to strike back from the shadows against an enemy which had weakened the Empire. It had an automated subroutine which would have went to various secret Imperial hideouts, picking up stormtroopers, then striking back against whichever faction that had gained power. Because of the secrecy of Palpatine's battle moons, it was speculated that there were more somewhere in the galaxy, but none ever popped up. Alright, so next up is the Killick Nest Ship, and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to include either this vessel or the Yuzhan Vong world ships, but because the Nest Ship is far less well known, I thought we'd talk about it today. So without going too deep into this warm war, the Killicks are basically bugs, and they share a hive mind with various nests across the galaxy. The Nest Ship is essentially a mobile version of these colonies, capable of traveling through space and even fighting in battle. Here's how they're described in The Unseen Queen. The moons were easier to survey. They were all about 8 kilometers long, egg-shaped, and radiating heat from a core area near their thick ends. Those aren't moons, Han said, they're nest ships. There were 15 of them here, one for each of the 14 nests the colony had established on the Nebula Worlds, plus an extra vessel for the Dark Nest. Even the Killicks could not have built such a fleet in only a couple of months. So the vessels were very simplistic. Imagine, say, an ant nest compressed and brought into space. They were unshielded, and basically just levels and levels of spitcrete and durasteel piled upon each other. Because of all these layers, they were very difficult to destroy. If you shot at one with lasers, for example, you might destroy one level, but there are thousands underneath. And basically what you have to do is find a hole, or usually make one, then drop a large bomb in it. Of course, they were also armed with turbo lasers and missile launchers, possessed both sublight drives and hyperspace drives, and of course, were just full of bugs. Next up, we have the Bellator, which is not only unique as a Super Star Destroyer, but also a fan favorite, which is kind of odd given the fact that it only really exists as a creation of the Essential Guide to Warfare, some blurry pictures in Dark Empire which have been retconned notwithstanding. Anyway, I'll keep this one short. Most of you probably know the details of the Bellator. It was a smaller Super Star Destroyer with a focus on speed rather than brute force. It was a divergent entry in the Mandator line. Line. The Mandator 1 and 2 were pre-Clone Wars and Clone Wars era vessels respectively, while the Mandator 3 was a powerful dreadnought used by the Empire. However, while most of the Mandator line appeared to be bulky, powerful ships, the Bellator was something different, trading in at least some of the firepower for reduced size and increased speed. I love Fractal Sponge's design of the ship, it looks like a dagger, while still somehow maintaining the Super Star Destroyer aesthetic and mass. 
All in all, very cool, and one of my favorite ships in Star Wars Legends, not only because it shows how you can change what is typically done, but also because you can look at the Mandator line as an example of technological progression. Anyway, next up we have another post-New Jedi Order ship, and as anyone who's read Legacy of the Force, and also to a lesser degree, Dark Nest and Fate of the Jedi knows, the Legacy era was often throwing out ships without giving any real detail. For for example, the Megador is a Super Star Destroyer, but doesn't seem to match any known configuration. The Blue Diver is a heavy carrier, Mon Calamari Cruiser, while the Galactic class is, well, who knows. Anyway, I've done a whole video on that subject, which I'll link above, but the one I wanted to talk about today is the Corellian Dreadnought, and this is a weird choice because honestly, we know almost nothing about the ship. The Dreadnoughts were constructed over a period of 10 years by Corellia, who was beginning to fear the overbearing nature of the Galactic Alliance. There were at least three of these ships produced, and they led a brand new top secret Corellian attack force. They were produced in a secluded, mineral rich asteroid field, presumably with the help of the quite famous Corellian Engineering Corporation. They only appear in Legacy of the Force Tempest, where they're described as egg shaped. And that was interesting to me, because it's certainly a divergence from the more common Super Star Destroyer type models. Anyway, the Dreadnoughts were said to be fleet killers, but ultimately played a very small role only, even in the Second Galactic Civil War. Finally, we have the Arkhammer, and I was considering doing a full video on this vessel, but you guys in a poll didn't seem too interested, so a brief summary will suffice, at least for now. The Arkhammer was a massive Imperial vessel which served as the home for the Dark Trooper project. However, it was more than just a production facility. As we see in Dark Forces, it was also a carrier which could deploy Dark Troopers in ODST style pods. So you definitely do not want to see this thing above your world, certainly not if it's accompanied by the Executor. We don't know much about the Arc Hammer, but the fact that it's sort of a mobile research station slash factory slash carrier, I think is super cool. And it would have been interesting if Rogue One had included a ship like the Ark Hammer as a station for the Death Star plans. But that's neither here or there, and ultimately the Dreadnought was destroyed by everyone's favorite hero, Kyle Katarn. Anyway guys, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this top 5 list. Did I miss your favorite weird, strange, or obscure Dreadnought? Let me know all of that and more down in the comments section. Today's question comes from Connor Hughes, who asks about getting into Star Wars books using Audible. So I did talk about this a little bit on my my recent podcast with Corey from Corey Loses and Corey's Datapad, but generally what you do need to know about Star Wars audiobooks is that many of them from the post-Endor era all the way up until Fate of the Jedi are heavily abridged. Now some of the abridgments are pretty damn good, like the ones for Legacy of the Force, but others like the X-Wing novels are really bad. So if you're interested in that time period, look for the ones that are unabridged, mainly that's the Thrawn trilogy, which I think is a great place to start. The Bane Trilogy is also unabridged if you're interested in that, and if you'd like to support my channel, you can get a free audiobook by using audibletrial.com slash Letter. I'll probably put a link down in the description, but who knows, I might forget. Anyway, until next time guys, this has been Eckhart Slatter. As always, be safe, have fun, have a great day, and may the Force be with you.